Hey guys, thanks for stopping back to Beach Garage. Well, now that we have the engine completely assembled, we're ready to run it. Now, I could just drop it in the car and start it up and tune it the best I can, get the timing, try and adjust the carburetor uh, myself, but that's not going to get the full potential out of this engine. You really have to put it on a dyno, uh, check your air fuel mixture, uh, torque, RPM, make sure everything is within range for the carburetor because this engine originally came with a two barrel and it was switched. A four barrel manifold and a four barrel carburetor were put on it. So I don't know how well it was adjusted. Um, may, not, may not have been running to optimum performance when it was put together. So we take it to the dyno and we run it and we tune the carburetor. But before we do that, there's a few things we have to do to make sure when we put it on the dyno we don't have any problems. So let's do that first. First thing you do is you got to fill up with oil. I'm using an SA10W40 and this is the Brad Penn Pen grade racing oil and it contains the zinc and phosphorus for uh, engine braking. This is important when you have a new cam and lifters you want them to set properly and uh, it also helps the bearings so even though the bearings were coated and the parts were coated internally with engine assembly lube, uh, use this oil on, on startup and braking and it helps break in the engine since regular oils you buy do not have the zinc and phosphorus in it so this is made only for racing so I'll put five quarts of this in. Now that the oil is in, I have to make sure that I have oil pressure, so I'm going to pull my distributor out carefully. Set it aside. And now what I'm going to do is, I have a, a, a drill bit that I made up, and the drill bit is the same size as the drive in the oil pump. So I'm going to insert this where the distributor was, Make sure that it engages here. I guess I gotta get it in there, right? There we go. Okay, now I got engaged. Now, what I'm doing is I'm, I have a drill motor on here, and the rotation is counterclockwise, like that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the oil pump until I get pressure. And I have a gauge here in the cylinder head to show me if I get pressure. And I'm gonna continue to run it. And as it's running, I'm going to take a small flash like this and I'm going to look inside where the distributor was and I want to wait until I see oil coming down both sides of the galley inside or the valley inside. I want to make sure oil is coming down both sides. That means that oil has pumped its way to the top of both cylinder heads and it's completely lubing uh, both sides of the engine. So here we go. We should get oil pressure right away. There we go. We got oil pressure. Yeah, I can already see oil flowing on the one side. Oil flowing on both sides. Good oil flow. So it looks like it got about 50, 60, 70 psi oil pressure. And I have a lot of oil coming down. So now the engine is pre-lubed. So now what I'm going to do is, and I won't, won't do this on video, but I'm just going to turn the engine over a little bit, a couple times, and then I'm going to redo it so that I make sure I have oil pressure and everything is evenly coated, including the cam gear and sprockets up front. The distributor is in place. My rotor is pointing towards number one on my cap, which is number one up in front. I can put my cap on. And now I can pull out my, my gauge here because they're not going to need the gauge, they have their own gauge on the dyno. I'm going to pull that out and I'm going to just sit a little pipe plug in here just so nothing falls in there on the way. So, now, now the uh, motor's complete, oiled, it's all pre-lubed and it is all ready to go to the dyno. So let's take this thing and see how it runs. One last thing to note, you take the dyno, take the engine to the dyno without any alternator, power steering, nothing on there. You just put the water pump pulley on and the main pulley which stays on and they have their own belts and they put them on there just to get water flowing through the uh, engine as they start it up and run it. But that's all you need. You don't have to have uh, tons of brackets on there. Um, so now I'm ready to load it up in the cradle and take it over to the dining room. Australia on that uh, Hatches Dino, Joe Hatches 
up the carburetor. The secondary jets were running lean. We were putting about 3 thousandths. We're going to put the jets back in, put the carburetor back together and run it, see if we can get some more horsepower out of it. So this is how we ran. The first run we had, the first pull we did, we first look at the air-fuel ratio here and you can see that the air-fuel was, was above 15, 15.9. It stayed above 15, it only dipped below just once, but the uh, air-fuel was, was way too high here. It's running lean. So it's running lean in the secondary and what we ended up with at uh, 3,000 RPM, we had uh, 206 foot-pounds of torque and we ended up with uh, only 126 horsepower at 4200 RPM. That's because the engine is running lean. Okay. So what we did is we took the carburetor apart, took the secondary jets and opened them up seven thousandths, ran it again. So then we ran, after running it again, it was still above 15, it dipped down below to 14 here, you can see it dropped. This really needs to be around 13, so the, it's the secondaries are it's still running way too lean. but. Opening up the secondary jets, only 7,000, so we got the 205 now up to 3,400 RPM where our torque is uh, 205 at 3,400, and we got it up to 142 horsepower at 4,100. So 7,000 opening on the secondary jets equaled 16 horsepower boost, which is still terrible. It's still way too lean. So uh, we have to open up the secondary jets some more. All right, so this is what it basically boils down to. The engine was running way too lean. And playing around with the carburetor on a dyno is expensive because at $80 an hour for dyno time, that time adds up quick. We already spent four hours running it on the dyno, changing the jets a couple times, and the problem is we were drilling out the jets, which you really shouldn't do because when you drill out a jet, it leaves sharp edges and burrs and you don't get a true reading. I didn't have the parts, we didn't have extra jets, so I decided let's take it off the dyno because we're just killing time, wasting money. So now I ordered new jets, and I'll show you how to change the secondary jets on this carburetor. Uh, we'll measure them, see where they're at, put it back together, and we'll take it back for a final run. This is a fairly simple process. You take off your choke plate, take out the three screws that hold in the choke, pull that out, take off the arm from the choke, that's this, this, this choke arm goes on the choke, take off the little clip that goes to the pump, Take that off there. The 16 screws that are holding the top on, and you should be able to lift this straight off. Of course, there's always one or two screws that hang up. There we go. So I take it off, set that aside very, very gently. Don't want to ruin it. Now, our secondary jets are in the back of the carburetor which is back on this side and they reside right down in the bottom so you can see the secondary jets in the bottom there so let me take those out and all you need is a screwdriver put a screwdriver in there and they just come right out loosen it up they're made out of brass so they won't be magnetic reach in pull out one of the jets okay now before I made the video, I wanted to save some time, so I measured the ones that were in there. The secondary jets that were in there were way smaller than the primary jets. The pri matter of fact, they were smaller by 20 thousandths. That's not including the seven, seven thousandths we machined out of there. So the secondary jets were way smaller than the primaries, so of course it's going to run lean. So what I'm going to put in there, I'm going to put in the jet that's, that's we're gonna, I'm going to start with uh, the next size up from the primary jet so the secondary jet will be a little larger than the primary jet this time but I'll put those in there and we'll um, we'll put the top of the car back on okay now the jets that were in there they were, the size was 65 thousandths 
The size that it's in the primary is 89, and I'm going to put a 92 thousandths in the secondary. You just sit that in place, and come here with your screwdriver. And you don't have to torque them, not super hard, so you don't need to crank on it, just it's brass, so you're just seating that in there. And put the second jet in. That's all we need. Now I can put the top back on and we'll be ready to roll. Alright guys, I'm at Hetz's Dyno. We got it on a dyno, we ran it, we, we made sure we had the right jets. Let's go in and see how it performs. Okay, so here are our final numbers off the dyno. Just to recap, I started out the first run, first pull was 126 horsepower at 4200 RPM. It was running really, uh, running really lean. The air to fuel mixture was about 15.9. That should be a lot lower, maybe 14.7. So it was running lean. It actually made 206 foot pounds of torque at 33,000 RPM. So what we did was we took the jets out, opened them up 7,000 in the secondary, and that got us up to 142 horsepower at 4,000 but it was still running lean 15.7 we got 205 foot pounds of torque at 3400 rpm at 14.8 for air fuel mixture the final numbers are after the last pull and everything ran perfect we had just perfect air fuel mixture we had 163 horsepower at 30 uh, 3800 rpm with 258 foot pounds of torque just at 2600 rpm so even though the factory rated that engine at 225 we ended up with 163 now, it did have stock manifolds on it, uh, but the engine was bored out 30,000 so oversized pistons, so the displacement was a little bigger, but it topped out at 163 horsepower. And it's going to stay that way because now the air fuel mixture is perfect, the, the, the timing is set 40 degrees ahead, everything is working out perfect, and the most they can get out of it is 163. That answer is a big mystery. I know you guys have been waiting for the answers, and that's where it came out, 163. So the next step, I've got to get the engine, bolt up all the accessories, throw it in the car and we'll hook up the transmission, we'll get this baby on the road and I'll make a video of that. But in the meantime, uh, I'll send out a message, maybe we'll do it live when we start it up for the first time, something like that. But um, it was a lot, of, a lot of fun. It took a long time on the dyno, roughly total time was about 8-9 hours. And that's what happens when you have to put it on, take the carburetor apart, put it on, take it apart, and it just takes time. But it beats putting it in your car trying to tune it, trying to run it, trying to get it to work right, and then if you have a problem, you got to take it back out. This way you run it on a dyno, you tune the carburetor, it's dead nuts on, it's really cheap insurance, it is. 
Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to give me a text or leave a comment. I'll answer as many the comments as fast as I can. And uh, I'll send out a message when I'm ready to start it up for the first time when it's in the car and when you're ready to go down the road. So thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.